negative one five, one five, two eight, which is not on there. And then you, you want to show uh, some curvature to this. We don't want to see straight lines. Yeah. Something like that. Something that looks reasonable. Okay. Any questions, thoughts on that? Uh, wait, how do you know whether it's supposed to be like a curve or like the V or just a line? Like how, like, am I going to know like on a test, like why yeah. X squared plus four isn't like a straight line? All right, so so y equals x is is a line, like you mentioned. If it's an absolute value of x, which we do next, it's going to be a v, either a v up or a v down. Okay. And the squared is the u shape. All right. So the the they do this in uh, psychology. They ask the question back. Like you ask me, how am I supposed to remember this? I'm going to ask you to you back. How are you going to remember this? And reason I'm doing that is like like you just have to come up with a way that you're going to remember this. Uh, I don't have a great explanation for how to remember this. All right. Here, like these are go ahead. Is it okay if I just like copy it down real quick? Of course. Yeah, of course. And and I'm I'm sending this to you at the end as um as PDF, but yeah, get it down in your notes and all right. All right, thank you. Of course. Uh, so more practically, like note card, quizlets, um, you know, looking at your notes, you know, every day, a few minutes a day would help. That's that's sort of the practical ways to do this. All right. Uh, I wish it was, you know, better answer, but it's, it's really all it is. Sorry. All right. This is an absolute value. And so to your to your question here, you're you're supposed to know that it's some sort of a V. Okay. Okay. Again, this does have a uh, a table and there is a vertex. The vertex is at zero. Um, the teacher's trying to show you that right there, that that's your vertex. All right. And so again, you want two smaller and two larger. All right. Okay. So to, to to get the y values, you have to substitute these x values into the equation. Absolute value always returns positive. Yeah. So right. what would the y value be? Six. Okay. And what about the next y value? Five. Good. Keep going down here at the bottom. These two. Um, um, five and then six. Yeah, and there's symmetry again. Yeah. So these are ordered pairs. Uh, negative two, six. Oh, that's not right. Any questions, thoughts on that? Um, no. Okay, let's take a look at number seven now. All right, so this one is linear, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Because it's x to the power of one. Yeah. All right, now there's a lot of ways you could graph a line, but this one doesn't really have a nice slope. This number in front of X is considered the slope, but it's yeah. not very nice. So we're better off again, making a table. This time though, we don't need five points. Um, you actually only need two points for a line, but let's do three, zero. We'll choose one smaller and one, one larger. Okay. So we're gonna put these values in for X and this equation here. Um. So it would be like zero, zero. Good. 
and then 1.36 for negative one, and then negative 1.36 for the positive. Good. And so you're just roughly graphing where you think these go. I mean, you're not gonna be perfect. Um, and then you just get a nice straight line out. You know, maybe you get a ruler, maybe your teacher doesn't care. All right. So when Sometimes, you good. like find that it's not exact. <laughs> That's really a question for your instructor. I mean, I had a teacher that would extend your line down to some crazy place and verify that it was right. That's how he wanted to make sure you're using a ruler. Just um, ask your instructor what they want. Um, okay. I mean, you could argue like, why am I graphing this by hand when we have tool to graph, you know, these for us? Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a great question because it's, it's thought provoking. Like, why are we doing this by hand? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I agree. If, all right. Uh, 13 is the next one that I see. Does that look right to you for the order here? Yeah. All right, I do try to do them in order as best I can. Mm. All right, f of x equals x. You you may be uncertain about this notation. f of x just means y. So this is really y equals x. Um, you could even just think of it as y equals 1x like that. All right. Okay. This one's different. Like you, you could make a table because the slope is so nice. Do you remember what slope stands for or what it refers to in the in the graph? Uh like not exactly. So have you heard these words in class? No. Rise over run. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you guys going to class? Are you is the teacher teaching? I don't know. All my teacher does is yell at us. <laughs> like she's okay. so She's so mean. All right. So there's behavior problems in the classroom and getting in the way of teaching. <laughs> she's always, every time people do bad on the quiz, she's like, you guys should be embarrassed. Like a third grader could do this because I'm in like the lowest level of math. Like it's yeah. so sad. Yeah, that's that doesn't work. Uh, it, it works some, with some people, but a lot of people doesn't. That doesn't work. Um, yeah, I would just tune that out. I would really not, not listen to that. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. The slope is rise over run. You can write every number over one. Any number you can write over one, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So the slope is one, but it's really one over one. The rise tells you how much up or down. You're going up one. The run is always to the right. You're going right one. All right. Okay. Now I'm adding this in plus zero. This is the B value. The B value is the Y intercept. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Okay. So when you graph, you start at the Y intercept, which is zero right there. That's where we start. Okay. You use the slope to get a new point. You go up one, right one from here. So you go up one, right one. There's your next point. And from there, you do the same thing. Up one, right one, and yeah. so on. Now, how many should you graph? I have no idea. Ask your teacher. All right. So, like that. Or, or, you know, I don't know. Uh, send an email so you don't get yelled at. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. Uh, that is that is it for that one. Okay. Now, that'll, it'll, what we did, we're going to, everything we did in this problem, we're going to do in 14. Um, it's it's get up a little bit more complicated, but you always determine the slope. The B value, you start with the B value, then use the slope to make new points for the graph. Okay. So we're going to do that here for number 14. All right. So the, again, that F of X is really Y. This is really Y equals negative one third X. So notice I'm putting that negative in the numerator. You can actually put it in either place, but it makes more sense to put it in the numerator in the top here. All right. If nothing is there to the right, you can you can say that's plus zero. The okay. slope is always the number in front of X. What is the number in front of X here? 
Negative one third. Negative one third, okay. And so in terms of the slope here, we know that that's rise over run. When it's negative, it means down one. Run is always to the right, right three. So it's always to the right, but the top number, if it's positive, it's going up. If it's negative, it's going down. All right, okay. there you have it. What is the B value in this problem? Zero. B value is zero. And you start at the B value. So you put a big, big dot there. And then we use the slope from this from this starting point. We know to go down one and right three. Down one, right one, two, three. There's our new point. Oh, I see. Okay. You don't count the starting one. You go down and then you go one, two, three. Down one, right one, two, three. There's the next point there. Um, all right. To get the points to the left, actually, I shouldn't have done that. If, if you need points to the left here, the best way to do it is to sort of like say, well, I think it's there. And then does that work? If I go down one and right three, do I get back to that point? Yeah. Try mm -hmm. not to like undo, you know, up, down, left, right. Just sort of say, well, I think it's there. And is that right? Down one, right three. Yeah, that worked. Like, uh, don't create unnecessary rules for yourself when you're doing these. Okay. Got it. Okay, so the next uh, problems I see start with 34. Does that look right to you? Uh, yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so it says find the standard form of the line satisfying the given conditions. Do you remember anything from class about standard form? Um. Um. Is that y equals mx plus b? That is on the way to the standard form. That's called slope intercept form. Oh. Uh, then so no, I don't remember. <laughs> So standard form is AX plus BY equals C. But you get there from going through standard or through slope intercept form. All right. So uh, I don't know why, couldn't tell you why they want standard form, but they do. So that's, that's just an important thing here to, to see that we, we have to like move, make a progression through uh through this. So, all right, this has a slope of two through five times a negative two. So let's start with your equation, y equals mx plus b. What does m represent? The slope. Do we know the slope? Two. Two, so we substitute the slope in. To find b now, you need an x and a y. So you plug those in for y and x. Oh, okay. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the only letter remaining is b. You can solve for b. Negative 2 equals 10 plus b. Subtract 10 from both sides. Wait. So b e good. Why is b not negative 2 if it's the y-intercept? This is, this is just a point on the line. It's not the y-intercept. It's it's a it's a y value. Oh, okay. Okay, so let let me go back because I think your question's important here. The the y when you when you're given the equation, you you get the y intercept. The y intercept though is where it crosses the y axis. The, oh. the point the point that you're given here, five negative two, like it's it's uh it's over here, roughly. Like that's five negative two. Oh, okay. which is not, you know, it's not the y-intercept. It's just All a right. point, place in space. Okay. All right. So again, to solve for, for B, you put the, the those numbers in fraction Y, negative 2 equals 10 plus B, subtract 10 from both sides, B equals negative 12. That goes back into this line here. Okay. So it's y equals 2x minus 12. Is that okay so far? 
Yeah. Because there's more. There's more. Like oh, there's... if it said to write it in slope intercept form, you'd be done. That's not. Oh, okay. So unfortunately we gotta do this. So um what I think rather than like explaining what this is for tonight, we're just gonna do it so you can you can we can get through as much of this as possible. Um, yeah. but there are some rules for this. So we're going to subtract two X from both sides. And you get minus two X plus one Y equals negative twelve. And then you will multiply everything by negative one. And that will give you two X minus one y equals 12. And this is your final answer in standard. standard does, the, does the, um like the negative 12, like is that what has to be positive or does the slope have to be positive? The a has to be positive. Ah, uh, okay. Good question, good question. You also have to have whole numbers, no integers, no fractions. X has to be first, then y. Some books do AX plus BY plus C equals zero, where everything's on the left. Hmm. This is the yeah. more traditional. Yeah, I don't, I've never seen like plus C equals zero. So I, I don't think that she wants that. It's important to give the teachers what they want. So do it the way that they're asking for. That's the, that's the game here. Give them what they want. So you get the grade. Mm -hmm. right, 35 is the same same as the previous problem, except that they don't give you the slope. No slope. Yeah. So you have to determine the slope using the slope formula. So the, the first ordered pair is x1, y1. Second ordered pair is x2, y2. All right. So the... So it's minus two is y2 minus that minus is always there. Y1 is negative. So we're putting that negative there next to it. But this subtraction operator is always there. All right. X2 is minus four, always a minus, minus six. The double negatives become positives. So this is negative two plus one, negative four plus six. This is negative one over two. Yeah, all right. I remember I took, like, this was on, like, the last quiz we had, and I got to okay. here, and then I, like, didn't know what to do. All right, so you your, your equation, y equals mx plus b, we're going to use that again. This is the slope. All right. All right, so you write y equals minus one half x plus b. So we got to this place in the previous problem. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and look at that line in the previous problem. What did we do after we wrote the slope in? Uh, replace the y and the x. Yes. Now this one, the difference here is you actually have two options. You can either use this x and y or this x and y. It does not matter which one you choose. Which one do you want to choose? Uh, negative six, negative one. All right, so we're gonna use negative six, negative one, that's X, that's Y. Negative one equals negative one half times negative six plus B. All right, so we have to solve this equation. Negative one half times negative six is positive three. And then we subtract three from both sides. So B equals negative four. That goes back into this line here. Y equals negative one half X minus four. Is this clear up to this point? Yeah. Okay. This time we're going to move the, uh, the X over, add one half X. This becomes one half X plus one Y equals negative four. Problem is we cannot have fractions. No fractions in standard form. They just don't like fractions. So how do you undo a fraction? Any idea from class or uh, previous multiply, classes? Multiply like the reverse. Yes. So by two, now you're multiplying everything by two. It's not a choice. Everything must get it. So you get X plus two Y or one X plus two Y equals negative eight. 
And there you have it. All right. Since the x is connected to the one half, it doesn't turn into like two x, right? It's it's really two over one. Two over one times one half. You multiply the tops, you multiply the bottoms. It reduces to one over one or just one. Ah, uh, all right. And you like don't have to simplify like divided by two, right? We we did. Like like you you are dividing, but Oh but no, two... no, I mean like the final answer, like where it's like x plus two y equals negative eight. Like don't divide like the two out, right? To the eight. You you multiply everything by two. But because you, you're asking about this, like everything gets multiplied by two. All right. I I can tell this isn't clear. Um we no, should I, mean, I get like getting the fraction out, but I mean like the final answer, like in the rectangle, where it's like one x plus two y equals negative eight. Do you not have to make it like x plus y equals negative four? Or does that not matter? Yeah, so we're so now we're just kind of you're multiplying this and this and this. Everything gets multiplied by the two. All right. Okay. 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 And and I I think I think that there's a little bit of a disconnect there, but like what I'm not showing is this intermediate step where you're actually multiplying everything. Oh. All right. Which maybe I should, you know, maybe the apologize for not doing that. Um, it's all right. Okay, yeah, I think I understand. All right. All right. Um, so we, we will move on here to 36. Um, it would be really good for us to do more problems like this, meaning like you to try one on your own. I mean, we just, I don't know that we're even going to get through all of this. So that's you know, maybe something to consider for future, but all right, let's, uh, let's take a look at this one. So this is kind of an exception, special case of the previous one. X equals four. Do you remember if that is a vertical or a horizontal line? Uh, Wait, no, I know this one. It's vertical. It's vertical, yeah. And I read it this way. X is always four. So on a graph here, and you maybe want to graph this, um, there's X equals four. X is always four. Now, where's the point negative two, three? It's right there. So perpendicular is this line right here. What kind of line is that? Horizontal. So horizontal lines always have the form y equals a number. What is the y value there at that point? Three. There you go. There's almost no work. All right. Is it, are they all like that? Because like, this is like the first time I've like ever seen this. Uh, 36 and 37 are like that. They're kind of exceptions. Okay. All right. The picture really will help if, if um, no, you're yeah. stuck on these. I'm like trying to like copy it, but <laughs> I'm not very good at drawing, but I think I understand. I'm like doing it, but I don't know. Like for 37, like I tried to do it really quick and I don't think I did it right. All right, let me, why your teacher made these numbers so far away. All right, y equals eight. Is that a horizontal or vertical line? Uh, Horizontal? Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's saying that y is always eight. There it is, y is always eight. All right, and here's the other point, negative two, negative five, one, two, three, four, five, all the way down here. Parallel, what does parallel mean to you? Like next to, like not crossing? Not crossing, they don't intersect. Do you agree that this is parallel to the one above it? Yeah. 
All right, so this is y equals what? What's the y value right there? Um, like negative five. There you go. There's your answer. Nice. It doesn't say actually went that bad. Not bad at all, yeah. Uh, well. Okay. 38 would appear to be next. Does that look mm -hmm. right to you? Yep. All right. Through this point perpendicular to this. Okay. Actually, we should not do this one next. We should do 39 next. Wait, why? 39. Uh, 39 is more like 30, more like the ones we just did. So let me All right. occasionally do them out of order here. All right. So uh, slope of zero. Is that a horizontal or a vertical line with a slope of zero? Uh, vertical? So a vertical line up and down has undefined slope. Oh. Horizontal lines have, you know, have zero slope. Oh. Which is not the same. So this is a horizontal line. Wait, what is undefined slope? Like is that like what does that mean? It's the it's that there is no uh way to describe it because the rate of change um doesn't have any run. Like it it uh Wait, so like straight up and down, like isn't a slope like at all? Yeah, it's actually consistent with climbing. Like, like there's always or hiking. Like you, you need, you can't. It's where hiking turns into climbing. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so horizontal lines have um a slope. Um, but now it's parallel to this point, minus one, minus one, one. So there's minus one, one. So there's actually a lot of options that work here. It's it's almost like your teacher didn't write this out correctly because uh, it can't be parallel to a point, but um, maybe it meant through the point. I don't really know. Um, I don't know either. Like she doesn't These are, these are all parallel to a line through there, but maybe it meant through there, you might wanna ask. So the possible answers could be y equals one. That's the one that goes through there. Maybe y equals two, y equals negative one. Maybe ask on those. Um, probably right. what happened is is there was a copy and paste error on her part. Mm, yeah. So she she's got the wrong instructions there. All right. Now we can go back and actually do the ones that we need to do that are different. So 38 here. The equation on the right here is in standard form. Standard form looks nice, but it's not very useful. Meaning you, you can't get much information from it. So if you want to get the slope, you need to solve for y. Okay, so we have to solve this equation that I've circled for y. Any any idea how to do that? Solve for y, cover yes. up x, like do negative three y equals six. Yeah, you can't do that. That's that's something different. Like we have oh. to get y, but y by itself. Oh wait, subtract two x then. Yes, subtract two x. Good. So it's minus 3y equals minus 2x plus 6. Divide by negative 3. You're dividing everything by negative 3. So y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. Like that. Dividing everything there by, by the number. Why couldn't you like cover it up? Like just out of curiosity. That's, that's to find the intercepts. When you cover it up, you're finding the intercept, which which could work, but you still have to find the rise over the run. You know, you have to figure out which which of these lines it is. 
because yeah, it's going to be it's going to be one of these four. Yikes. Um, yeah, which you don't want to do. Don't do that. All right. The uh, what is the slope of this of this line? Two thirds. Yes. Now the perpendicular slope is not two thirds, but it's related to two thirds. Do you remember how you go from the slope to the perpendicular slope? Oh, uh, like the reverse. Okay, flip. Flip the better word. Yeah, flip. Does that flip. have to be negative? Yes. So one, if it's positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, it becomes positive. All okay. right. So if it was two thirds and like positive three halves, like it wouldn't be like the opposite. It it always changes signs. So like like let me give you some examples. Let's say the slope is negative seven over four. The slope perpendicular would be four over seven. Okay. If the slope is one half, the slope perpendicular is negative two over one. So okay. you do flip it, but you also negate it. Flip negates good words, things like that. Okay, got okay. it. Okay. What if the slope though is like a whole number like three? Negative. Do you remember how to do you remember how to write three as a fraction? Uh oh, three over one and then negative over. one over three. Very good. Very good. Okay. All right. So that's kind of an aside here. So we, we have our slope. Our slope perpendicular is negative three halves. And I'm gonna like I'm gonna like reframe the question here because we did so much. Like sometimes we get stuck with all this stuff. So we yeah. we 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 need the perpendicular slope. We have that now. Like we don't care about that anymore. And we have this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to write y equals mx plus b. This is the slope. Mm -hmm. Y equals minus 3 halves x plus b. How do we find b? Um, 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 <laughs> wait, I like, I forgot. Okay, what am I pointing at? The, the point. And what does the point represent? Which letters? Oh, X and Y. Yes. So to find B, you need an X and a Y. Do you have an X and a Y? Yeah. Can you put those in for X and Y? Yeah. yeah. Now, are you allowed to use a calculator? I can't remember. No, not in on the okay. tests. All right. But I have one like right now. Sure. I mean, for homework, you know, do whatever you want to do, especially with our time. I mean, I don't want you to be messing around with calculations, but uh, you got to be able to multiply the fraction by the whole number. All right. So it'd be negative. Wait, hold on. I typed it wrong. Negative three over two times negative four. Yes. All right. Oh, I got six. Good. And to solve this for B, how do you undo this? Add a negative one. Nope. How do you undo? Well, B is negative one, but you, you get that by subtracting six. Oh, yeah. So that's what I meant. All right. So that goes back into the line right here. All right. All right, so that's your final answer, but oh, there's always like a little bit more to do. Boy, the teacher is brutal. Um, yeah, like this is this is just unnecessary. So it says write the equation of function notation. So here's what you have to know. You have to know that y is really f of x, and that's the only change. So it's not it's not that okay. it's just hard. It, it, yeah, you just change y to f of x. It's just like it's one more thing. It's one more thing. You're never, you know, like when am I done? When am I done? Well, one more thing. One more thing. All right. Now, now you're done. Yay. All right. So we're we're down to the last ten minutes here. Do you want us to skip ahead to any other problems or just keep doing them in um, order? We're definitely not going to finish everything. Sorry. Yeah. 
Okay, so I feel like I kind of understand like what we just did. So can you skip down to like 42 through 45, like these types of questions? Because like I just have like absolutely like no clue where to even start with these. Got it. Yeah. Good, uh, good, good choice here. All right. So 42 is a piecewise graph. Um, a what? A piece piecewise. Graph? Piece, piece? piecewise. Yeah. Piece wise. Like oh. that. Piecewise. Yeah. I don't know. It's a math term. Hmm. All right. So there's pieces. There's, there's a piece. There's a piece here and a piece. It's there. This okay. um, inequality notation, x less than, x greater than or equal to zero, that's what's called the breakpoint. So there's kind of like this like line that divides them. The, the first one's good to the left of it, and the other one's good to the right of it. Oh, all right. Okay, okay. Now, so like the, the arrow, like the thing, the yes. and then less than like points to the side that it goes to? Exactly. Cool. Yeah, I can remember. Okay, now we're going to make a table again. I mentioned that how useful tables are. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this first one. Now, it starts at zero. It says X is less than zero. You asked me, well, how do you know where to start? We'll start at zero because that's what it says. But this is what's called an open circle, an open circle. It's not filled in. The reason is, is because it's less than. Less than or greater than or open circle these are filled in circles oh, all right all right okay so now we're gonna we're gonna have that, that was like kind of an aside it's like we now need to pick x values for this table that are less than zero like negative one negative two all right so now we're going to evaluate the function y equals minus 3x at each of those points. Okay. So, so you're going to put these x values in for that x minus 3x. Can you tell me what goes here? Uh, well, 0 is 0. Okay. And then 1 is, negative 1 is 3, like positive. Good. Good. And then 2, negative 2 is positive 6. Good. Okay, so we're going to graph these now. Mm-hmm. So zero, zero is an open circle. Negative one, three is okay. It's a filled in. Negative two, six is filled in. And like you mentioned, the arrow is going that way. Wait, do all of the circles like up the line have to be open like zero, zero? No. Just no? the one at the edge. Just the one on the edge. Got it. So for these... If it's like less than zero, it always goes like zero, negative one, negative two, and then the next one will be zero, one, and two. Exactly. So we're going to do the next one here. We're going to make yet another table. That's why I emphasize tables. Zero, one, and two. This time, though, it's filled in. And I, I, I write, the reason I do this is so I don't forget. Like, I, easy to not remember. Um, but yeah. you have to put these x values into that x minus three and get the... Uh, all right, so zero, zero, negative. Nope. You're putting it, you're putting in X minus three. Oh, oh. Try, try that one more time. My bad. Negative three. Okay, negative three. Negative two. Okay, good. And negative one. Good. So we're going to graph these. Something like that. All right, and they don't have to like come from the same spot because I think I saw one where they did, but like they don't all have to be like that, right? What do you mean by that? I mean, like, me like a little remember, few more words. Like there was one like on the test or like the quiz because we went over today in class where they both started at zero zero, but I guess like they don't all have to be like that. No, um, the dividing line like forty five is a good one to look at. I answer that question. The dividing line can change like at 45 it's at one uh -huh. okay so the like the, this time the table 45 it's one 
zero, negative one, because it's less than one. Oh, okay. Okay, so four X minus three, could you fill in this table for us? Sure. Okay, I don't know if this is right, but I got one, negative three, and negative seven. We got to have to get you to have more confidence in yourself. You're doing great. You really are. Thank I mean, you. like, yeah. So these are, this, this is a filled in because it's it's less than or equal to. It's that equal to bit makes it filled in. So one, one, filled in. Zero, negative three. Negative one, seven. And you're going left. The teacher does want to see an arrow at the end, typically. Yeah. And wait, you don't have to bring this one like all the way through the graph, like the line? No, nope, because it's less than or equal to one. One is your break point. Oh, oh yeah. Did you ever do those art projects where you like folded your paper in half and then you you like did stuff on one side and then you flipped it over and it copied over? Uh like a like a trifle? <laughs> Something simpler, like a snowflake. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I, right. I didn't do much art. Well, you said you're not a math person. I figured maybe the art thing would, uh, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm an English person. An English person. All right. Are you reading any good books right now? Uh, well, for AP Lang, I'm doing The Awakening. The Awakening. I don't know anything about that. Are you reading any books outside of school? That's always. Uh, I'm rereading um, Lord of the Rings. It's like my favorite books. Excellent. I know I probably Excellent. sound like a nerd. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, the those the audio books. I have the audio books. They're really good. Um, I didn't realize the Hobbit was so much shorter than the Lord of the Rings. Oh no, yeah, it's like only one book, and it's like yeah, one, like a kid's book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. I was really <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> okay, for the for the uh, other side here, greater than one means you start at one, two, and three. Open circle this time. Right. Two X. Um. So two, four, and six. Good. So open circle. Two, four, three, six. Something like that. All right. Um, let's do 48. It's probably the easiest thing we can get done in the time we have remaining. All right. No, yeah, that's nice to get, like, one example of everything. So, like, even if we can't do them all together, like, I can, like, just go, like, do them, like, by myself. Like, to so make sure, yeah, make sure, uh, you know, you can always use Desmos. Uh, let me not share that. Sorry. Do you know about Desmos? Yeah. So, for the graphing ones, use that, especially if you need to just catch up on homework. All right. Save you some time. All right, so we're going to again make a table here. This time, though, to know where to start the table, you need the vertex point. The vertex point is at two. The reason it's at two is two makes absolute value of x minus two equal to zero. Whatever makes this zero is the vertex point. Oh, and all then right. you get two smaller and two, two larger. So could you, uh, I'll fill in this one. Could you fill in the rest of this table for us, please? Sure. Um, so, wait, we're replacing all of like the X values? Yeah, you're gonna put zero in for X. So zero minus two, absolute value minus two. All right, so two minus two is zero? Yes. Uh, well, uh, the, the, this is what's this one is zero because my zero minus two is minus two, absolute value minus two is two, two minus two is, is yeah. zero. Yes, okay. and then Keep one going. minus one minus two is negative one, and then that means like positive one because the absolute value and then minus two will make a negative one again, right? Good, yep. yep. Keep going here for the last two, all right, and then three minus two is one. One minus two 
No. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Sorry. I'm not giving this not answer. Keep going. Sorry. All right. All right. So it's like one minus two is negative one, and then four minus two is like two minus two is zero. Is that right? Good. Yes. Now I I would eventually have pointed this out to you in our lesson. Like by symmetry, you don't need to like do all the points. You just need to get like either the top oh. two or the bottom two, and then you, you can just replace. Okay, wait, are all of the graphs, I mean, the tables like this, like gonna be symmetrical or only like a few of them? Only absolute value of X and X squared. All right. So then we <laughs> graph, 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 graph. Oh, and it, it's the V. It's not the U, right? It's yeah. It's the V because the absolute value, yeah. Yeah, because like V for value. All right, got it. Okay, we are all done for the day.